great Caesar's ghost. Chris and a chubby little friend, it's like in my dream. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 disturbing Family Guy jokes. Do I take it out or do I leave it in? Do I take it out or do I leave it in? Ah! For this list, we'll be looking at the moments of dark humor in the animated show that made viewers pretty uncomfortable. Which Family Guy joke do you think really pushed the boundaries? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. A Grim Hospital Song After discovering Cleveland's wife Loretta was having an affair with Quagmire, Peter lets Brian know he has a knack for telling people bad news. We then cut to a patient getting a grim update from Dr. Hartman. I don't know how to tell you this, Mr. Devaney. So I'll let these guys do it. The medical professional decides to leave the brunt of the announcement to a barbershop quintet that includes Peter. In an instant, we get a jaunty song number where a patient is informed that he has AIDS. Not HIV, but full-blown AIDS. Be sure that you see that this is not HIV. They repeatedly hammer in the point by going into detail about his diagnosis and how it may have happened. Despite the news being delivered via a song, it was still an incredibly dark gag. Music certainly can't soften the blow of every announcement. I'm sorry, I wish it was something less serious. But it's it's Number 9. Dog Diaper Brian and Stewie have one of the most engaging dynamics on the show. So when we got a whole episode featuring just the two characters, we were understandably excited. But there was one aspect of the episode that we weren't exactly thrilled about. After the duo finds themselves stuck in a bank vault, Stewie develops a rash from his filled diaper. The pair finds that the only solution is for Brian to personally get rid of the contents. If the poo were to be removed... What, what is it? What are you driving at? Eat it. What? Eat my poo, Brian. Luckily, we don't see it, but boy, do we hear it. I can't finish. We get that the joke is about how dogs are occasionally willing to consume disgusting things. However, the amount of cringing this scene causes kind of overshadows the punchline. Brian, you rock. Thank you so much for doing this. Number 8. Bandana Sadness My essay won first prize in the New England Rising Writers Contest. I'm going to be honored at the big ceremony on Martha's Vineyard. Ooh, New England rising writers. I'm sure it'll be a veritable who's that of the literary world. At the start of the Play It Again Brian episode, the dog announces that he has won an award for his essay. As the family congratulates him, Chris sets up a cutaway gag by comparing Brian's achievement to the first chemotherapy patient to figure out the handkerchief look. The setup alone had us prepared for this joke to go into dark territory. We then see an ill guy trying a bandana around his head to cover the hair loss from his treatments. Honey, get in here! He excitedly tells his wife, and the two exclaim it's like he don't, don't even have, have cancer. cancer! I know! Oh my God. <laughs> Suddenly, he reports that he has aggressive cancer in a deadpan voice. No, but I still have pretty aggressive cancer. It was inevitable that this bit of black humor would have such a bleak conclusion. Number 7. Spacey Stunt Sometimes, comedies like Family Guy have a way of predicting the future. Viewers definitely suspected they had a crystal ball for this gag. In a 2005 episode set in a mall, Brian dares Stewie to go streaking. Ten bucks. Five bucks. Eight bucks and I'll do it. Fine. While running around, the baby screams that he was previously held captive by Kevin Spacey. The joke didn't seem that dark until 2017 when a series of news reports alleged that the actor had made inappropriate advances towards young people. In light of those revelations, this Family Guy clip was widely shared. After all, I do all of Kevin Spacey's matchmaking. So you're not interested in having sex with Kevin Spacey? Oh good, Kevin's going to love that. It appeared that the show had managed to call the actor a full 12 years before public accusations emerged. <gasps> he was gay the whole time! Number 6. Joking About His Daughter Quagmire has a long history of being obsessed with his physical desires. His carefree lifestyle seemingly catches up with him when his child is left on his doorstep. Oh my god! Well, now, now hang on, Quagmire. There's no guarantee it's your baby. Giggity? Oh, I say that. Naming her Anna Lee just for innuendo, Quagmire struggles to raise a kid while continuing his activities. He eventually chooses to let her get adopted by a new family. 
Just as Peter praises him for his sacrifice, Quagmire makes it really inappropriate by saying he may see her in 18 years. I'm proud of you, Quagmire. Thanks, man. Hey, who knows, maybe I'll bump into her in 18 years. What? No matter how you interpret that phrase, the implications of his statement are incredibly disturbing. Although we get that Quagmire is supposed to be sleazy, this joke seemed like a step too far, even for him. Did you really think I was going to change that much? Get out, everybody! Number 5. Michael J. Fox You only have two white shirts? Well, I had a third one, but it got ruined at that wine tasting at Michael J. Fox's house. Hi, I'm Peter Griffin. Now, we were going to show you the actual scene, but it... It would just make us all sad. It's known that Back to the Future actor Michael J. Fox has been living with Parkinson's for decades. Family Guy used that public awareness to set up a bit where Peter explained that he only has two shirts since the third was ruined by the actor at a wine tasting event. We then get a cutaway monologue of Peter breaking the fourth wall to explain that the joke was too sad for the show. However, the show immediately reverses course and shows the scene in full. Oh wait, now they're telling me they do want to show it. I really like the finish on this Shiraz. Son of a bitch, what is your problem? It wasn't the first time Fox was used as a punchline. In Long John Peter, they made a cutaway involving the idea of the actor being cast as Zorro. In both cases, his Parkinson's diagnosis was front and center of their humor. I've screwed up worse than Disney did when I cast Michael J. Fox in that Zorro remake. Who was that masked man who saved us? I don't know, but he left his insignia. Number 4. Bonnie's Revenge Bonnie has an interesting relationship with her husband Joe. We get a major hint at their messed up dynamic after Brian gets work as a real estate agent. During a viewing, he shows Bonnie a really slanted house that leads to a cliff overlooking the water. As Brian questions why she'd want such a property, he's asked to open the sliding door. When he does, she suddenly has a wheelchair with a sack of potatoes that she lets go of. The chair rolls down the slope off of the cliff and lands on a sharp rock. I'll take it. It's then pretty clear why Bonnie wants the house. We wish we could tell Joe to move out ASAP before facing a grim fate. I think next time you should bring someone else. Number 3. Driving While Intoxicated Alright, who's ready for a little tailgating? Hey Brian, toss me a cold one. Nothing better than a 7 a.m. beer in an unbrushed mouth. Family Guy has several episodes that feature characters driving after a few too many drinks. But the most disturbing gag came when the Griffins took part in the ritual of football tailgating. As Peter begins drinking, Lois reminds him that he's taking them home. He informs her that he knows just how many beers he can have and still drives sensibly. We then see a cutaway of an intoxicated Peter driving erratically. When he gets to his house, he says, Seven. But after it becomes clear that he hit two members of a family, he changes his answer to six. Seven. Six. Family Guy writer Wellesley Wilde stated that he was surprised they were allowed to include this joke. We definitely share his surprise. Number 2. Weekend at Stewie's As part of a long-running series gag of characters being pushed down the stairs, Chris and Meg accidentally cause their brother Stewie to stumble down the steps. He suffers a graphic head wound as a result. Well, I'm off to buy imaginary groceries. Scared of repercussions, the siblings decide to make Stewie look fine and definitely not in some kind of coma. Oh, look at my little cowboy. Come on, Stewie, up in your high chair. After Peter finds out, he decides to shift the blame to Lois and make it look like she was responsible. The final layer of this dark joke sees the mom try to cover up the incident instead of just taking Stewie to the hospital. Peter, Peter, we have to cover this up. Yeah, but what? Let's put a hat on him to cover the wound, and, and then let's get some makeup and draw eyeballs on his eyelids and find a way to pin this on someone else. I love you so much right now. Let's go to the hospital. Between the length of the gag and the shocking punchline, this is one of the darkest Stewie bits in the show's history. Hey, I just found out it's November. What the f***? Happen. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. A JFK Pez is Destroyed Over the years, Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane has made tons of jokes that he enjoys. 
But there's one JFK bit that he wouldn't use today. In the A Hero Sits Next Door episode, Peter attempts to stop a bank robbery. I hope you brought your striped pajamas, boys, because there's a five-year sleepover at the big house and you're invited. You'll never take us alive! Oh, Lois and the kids should be in here to see this. Yes, it's going very well. When sharpshooters take aim at him, a nudge from Lois causes a bullet to destroy a John F. Kennedy Pez dispenser that a kid was holding. Check it out! It's a John F. Kennedy Pez dispenser! Oh. Good thing I still have my Bobby Kennedy Pez dispenser. This reference to the president's real-life assassination was unbelievably dark. But it wasn't the only time the show referenced Kennedy's death. In a universe where Mayor McCheese was elected instead, the hamburger is shot before being munched on. That joke's not in bad taste, right? Oh, who cares? He's a cheeseburger. It's unclear if McFarlane felt like that JFK joke was more or less inappropriate than the first. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.